Hi there. My name is Pete. I'm one of the orthopaedic doctors. Can I confirm your name? Jane Smith. And how would you like me to address you? Jane is fine. Okay, Jane. So what I'd like to do today is an examination of your hands. So this is going to involve me having a look and a feel of the joints of your hands, then asking you to do a couple of movements and some special tests just to see the function of your hands. Would that be all right? That's fine, yeah. Firstly, are you in any pain at all? No, not at all. If at any point there's any pain, let me know and then I'll try and adjust the examination accordingly. Okay. For this examination, I'd like for you to grab the pillow, which is just behind you, and then place it on your lap. Now, can you put your palms on top of the pillow? So, having a closer look at the hands, I'm just seeing... Now looking at the fingers. Now looking at the MCPJs. And the... Now a closer look at the dorsum of the hand. Now looking at the wrists. Could you be able to turn your palms up, please? So now would you be able to bring your arms up, bring your elbows and your palms together? Okay, you can relax your hands up back down on the pillow. So for the feel part of the assessment now. So with the back of my hands, I'm just going to feel for any temperature changes. So I'm just going to palpate over the anatomical snuff box. Okay, so if you can turn your hands over, I'm just going to feel your pulse on your arm. So now I'm just going to squeeze across the joints. If at any point it feels uncomfortable, let me know. So over the wrists, MCPJs, generally over the fingers, and the thumbs. So now I'm just going to palpate over the palms. So it's like So now for the move part of the assessment, so can you put your arms out in front of you, keeping your elbows close to the side, and with your palms facing the floor, would you be able to cock your wrist backwards? Now bend your wrist forward. Now bring your palms up to a neutral position. Now angle your palms towards each other. Now move your palms away from each other. So now can you bring your hands out in front of you with the palms facing each other? Yeah. And now move the palms so that they are facing downwards. And now palms upwards. Now bring your hands back to neutral. Would you be able to splay your fingers out? Now close your fingers together. Listen. So keeping your hands in this position, would you be able to bend your thumbs so that they're pointing one another? So now I'm just going to repeat a few of the movements of the hand, um, but I'll be doing the movement for you. If you just let me know if there's any discomfort at any point. Okay, so can I just take your right hand? So you move. So now I'd like to do some functional testing. So firstly, I want to assess the pinch grip. Uh, so with each finger, touch your thumb. So with the uh, index, middle, ring, and little. Now I'd like to assess power grip. So would you be able to squeeze my fingers? Hard as you can. Okay. And now as a test for fine motor control, would be able to pick the coin up with both hands. Perfect, thank you. So now I'm going to test the sensation of your hands. So would you be able to put your hands onto the pillow with the palms down? And now if you could close your eyes, 
and then say yes if you can feel me touching the skin on your hands. And did it feel the same on both sides? Mm -hmm, it did. Perfect. So now I'd like to do some special tests. Uh, the first being Finkelstein. Would you be able to put your hands out in front of you, put your thumbs in your palms, and then wrap your fingers over your thumbs? And now in this position, would you be able to move your wrist downwards? One of the tests for carpal tunnel syndrome uh, is Tunnell's test. So would you be able to put your hands onto the pillow with the palms facing up and relax? So I'm just going to be tapping on your wrist. Another test for carpal tunnel syndrome is Phelan's test. So would you be able to flex your hands forward and then pushing the back of your hands together? So that completes the examination today. Thank you very much, Jane. Thanks. Hi there. My name is Pete. I'm one of the orthopaedic doctors. Can I confirm your name? Jane Smith. And how would you like me to address you? Jane is fine. Okay, Jane. So what I'd like to do today is an examination of your hands. So this is going to involve me having a look and a feel of the joints of your hands, then asking you to do a couple of movements and some special tests just to see the function of your hands. Would that be all right? That's fine, yeah. Firstly, are you in any pain at all? No, not at all. If at any point there's any pain, let me know and then I'll try and adjust the examination accordingly. Okay. For this examination, I'd like for you to grab the pillow, which is just behind you, and then place it on your lap. Now can you put your palms on top of the pillow? So having a closer look at the hands, I'm just seeing if there's any asymmetry or any obvious deformities, such as clawing of the fingers. Notice that you've got some nail polish on, uh, but ideally I'd like to comment if there's any nail pitting, onycholysis, leukonychia, coilonychia, or any nail fold in the parts. Now looking at the fingers, again, seeing if there's any swelling, erythema, any scars, or any deformities such as swan neck, boutonnieres, any features of osteoarthritis, which could be Heberden's nodes or Bouchard's nodes. Now looking at the MCPJs, I'm looking to see if there's any swelling or erythema, noticing if there's any subluxation or dislocation of the joints. Now a closer look at the dorsum of the hand, seeing if the skin looks tight, waxy or cold, um, if there's any skin changes, such as rheumatoid nodules or psoriatic plaques. Now looking at the wrists, seeing if there's any scars, which there's a little couple of scars there, uh, and then seeing if there's any swelling or erythema around that joint. Would you be able to turn your palms up, please? So now looking at the palms, just trying to notice if there's any part of erythema, looking closely at the phenol and hyperphenol eminences, and then looking around the wrists, and just to see if there's any signs of any surgical intervention, which could suggest carpal tunnel decompression. So now would you be able to bring your arms up, bring your elbows and your palms together? So I'm noticing if there's any flexion deformities of the hands, and now taking the opportunity to look at the skin around the elbows, seeing if there's any scars, which could be suggested of surgical decompression of any of the nerves, seeing if there's any skin changes, so rheumatoid nodules or psoriatic plaques. Okay, you can relax your hands up back down on the pillow. So for the feel parts of the assessment now. So with the back of my hands, I'm just going to feel for any temperature changes, particularly noticing anything over the MCPJs and the wrists. So I'm just going to palpate over the anatomical snuff box. Any pain here could be suggestive of a scaphoid injury. I could also palpate over the first extensor compartment any pain here could be suggestive of decurbins. Okay, so if you can turn your hands over, I'm just going to feel your pulse on the radial side and on the ulna side. So now I'm just going to squeeze across the joints. If at any point it feels uncomfortable, let me know. So over the wrists, the MCPJs, generally over the fingers and the thumbs. Was there any pain at any point? No, not at all. 
If there was, I would consider assessing each individual joint to find out which specific one uh, was causing the discomfort. So now I'm just going to palpate over the palms to assess if there's any palmar thickening. I'm palpating over the femur and hyperfemur eminences. So now for the move part of the assessment. So can you put your arms out in front of you, keeping your elbows close to the side? And with your palms facing the floor, would you be able to cock your wrist backwards? So this is wrist extension, which should be up to 80 degrees. Now bend your wrist forward. This is wrist flexion, which should be up to 70 degrees. Now bring your palms up to a neutral position. Now angle your palms towards each other. So this is radial deviation, which should be up to 20 degrees. Now move your palms away from each other. This is ulnar deviation, which should be up to 40 degrees. So now can you bring your hands out in front of you with the palms facing each other? Yeah. And now move the palms so that they are facing downwards. So this is testing pronation, which should be up to the angles of 70 degrees. And now palms upwards. This is supination, which should be up to the angles of 80 degrees. Now bring your hands back to neutral. Would you be able to splay your fingers out? So this is finger A, B duction. Now close your fingers together. This is finger A, D duction. This is testing the function of the ulnar nerve. So keeping your hands in this position, would you be able to bend your thumbs so that they're pointing one another? So this is thumb A, B duction, which is testing the function of the median nerve. Okay, thank you. So now I'm just gonna repeat a few of the movements of the hand. Um, but I'll be doing the movement for you. If you just let me know if there's any discomfort at any point. Okay, so can I just take your right hand? So I'm just assessing if it causes any pain at all and seeing if there's any joint crepitus. Okay. Uh, was there any discomfort at any point? No. If there was, I would then assess each joint individually to see which one was causing the issue. So now I'd like to do some functional testing. So firstly, I want to assess the pinch grip. Uh, so with each finger, touch your thumb. So with the uh, index, middle, ring, and little. Now I'd like to assess power grip. So would you be able to squeeze my fingers as hard as you can? Okay. And now as a test for fine motor control, would be able to pick the coin up with both hands. Okay, thank you. So now I'm gonna test the sensation of your hands. So would you be able to put your hands onto the pillow with the palms down? And now if you could close your eyes and then say yes, if you can feel me touching the skin on your hands. So assessing the radial nerve, I'll be touching in the first web space on the dorsum of the hand. Yes, yes. To assess the median nerve, I'll be touching the index finger. Yes. Yes. And to assess the ulnar nerve, the little finger. Yes. Yes. And did it feel the same on both sides? Mm -hmm. It did. Perfect. So now I'd like to do some special tests. Uh, the first being Finkelstein, which is a test for de Quervins. Would you be able to put your hands out in front of you, put your thumbs in your palms, and then wrap your fingers over your thumbs? And now in this position, would you be able to move your wrist downwards? So if there's any pain on the radial aspect of a wrist, uh, this is a positive test for de Quervin's tenosynovitis. One of the tests for carpal tunnel syndrome uh, is Tunnell's test. So would you be able to put your hands onto the pillow with the palms facing up and relax? So I'm just gonna be tapping on your wrist. Let me know if there's any changes in sensation, any numbness. Another test for carpal tunnel syndrome is Phelan's test. So would you be able to flex your hands forward and then pushing the back of your hands together, forcing your wrist into a forced flexion position? And now could you let me know if there's any pain, numbness, or any other change in sensation? No, none. Okay, I'm relaxed. So that completes the examination today. Thank you very much, Jane. Thanks. So to complete my assessment of the hands today, I would like to examine the joint above, which is the elbow. If I hadn't already done so, I'd like to do a neurovascular assessment of the entire limb. I would consider doing a measurement of the grip strength as well. I would request radiographic views of the wrist in AP and oblique views, and also a radiograph of the hand and AP and lateral view.